Good evening and welcome to TWC TV. I'm your host, Patrick D. McCoy. We thank you for joining us for this very special episode as we take an inside look into Cantata for a more hopeful tomorrow by Damien Jeter. As we look at this work, we're gonna have a conversation with filmmaker Bob Berg, soprano Andy Moore, and artistic director of the Washington Chorus, Dr. Eugene Rogers. Visit the website for more information and ticket prices. What's special about this particular episode is that each of our guests will share their perspective about the work and the movements in which they are participating in. From the perspective of the conductor, Eugene Rogers, the soloist, Andy Moore, and filmmaker, Bob Berg you'll hear very distinct excerpts from this work and you'll get to have an opportunity to get a glimpse into the feeling and the mood of what is to come. Please welcome artistic director, Dr. Eugene Rogers. Hi, Eugene, how are you? Hi, Patrick, I'm great. Thank you so much for having me a part of TWC TV. I love that you're a part of our family. Thank you so much. It's great to have you here on this platform. Now, listen, I ask everybody this when I talk to them. So, Eugene, tell me, how are you doing during this time, this weird time of COVID-19? You know, I go up and down, right? I think we all have our highs and lows, our good and bad days, but for the most part, I'm hopeful. And it's because of projects like this, working with the wonderful folks at the University of Michigan and the Washington Chorus that just sort of keep me going. You know, when I'm feeling a little down, there's somebody around the corner to help. So I'm, I'm doing well overall, considering, you know, I have a good friend who talks about okay being the new great. So I'm doing okay, which is great for, for COVID. <laughs> and now we're going to welcome soprano Andy Marie Moore, who's the featured soloist in this great work, and also award-winning filmmaker Bob Berg. Good afternoon, or good evening, rather, to everyone. Of course, Eugene, great to see you as well. So Eugene, I'm going to um, come back to you and just, you know, uh, talk about this whole process of putting this virtual presentation together, what, what runs through your mind when you're trying to present this kind of major world premiere during this time? COVID-19, as they call it. Well, what runs through my mind is fear. <laughs> no, I mean, fear because, you know, this is a choir that I, we have rehearsed all online for the past two months or so. And so to think that the very first performance of my time with them is through cell phones and Zoom, I mean, whoever imagined. So, uh, and obviously thanks to some amazing engineers and the, and the dedicated course, I think hopefully folks will be very pleased with what we're about to produce, but I'm quite nervous as you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> now, Andy, when you were presented this opportunity to sing at this world premiere of Damien Jeter, first of all, we all, you and uh, Eugene and I all had this Virginia connection going on. First of all, that's like the trifecta of Virginia, just excellent. So, congratulations. Well, you know, it's something in the water in Virginia, honey. <laughs> We've been drinking that water a long time. <laughs> well, Andy, I had a chance to, to, to touch base with you just a little bit. And um, you're, you're singing this work, man, this, this fabulous work, um, Cantala for More Hopeful Tomorrow. And you're singing, of course, a soprano lead part. And um, talk to me about that. I know that you, you, you're you very prominent in the work, but talk to me about the movement that really strikes you probably the most. Well, let me just say that Damien is, he's just brilliant. He's so smart about how he wrote this. Um, and, and his music in general. He's a talented composer, but also a fantastic singer and artist. So he writes well for the singer. Um, let me just say that. So all of my movements, I actually love. It was really difficult for me to choose one because all of them mean something different for, for me. But what strikes me the most, especially because we are in COVID-19, is the bomb in Gilead. You know, what is the bomb? Who is the bomb? You know, and that's how I think about, you know, I'm a Christian, as you already know. Um, but I just think, oh, Jesus is my bomb in Gilead. And right now we need just the country itself, it, no matter what your thoughts and, you know, who, 
with political, um, your spiritual, whatever your thoughts are right now, our country is divided and it's time for healing. And so Balm and Gilead to me, that's what it rings. And I, and it just really, um, I sang it differently than I did when I was a little girl. Cause that's something that I sang when I was in, as a child. I think we have a little bit of that clip that features that, that section. And let's just take a moment to, to listen to that for a bit to give the listeners just an idea of what they were hearing. The Holy Spirit revives my soul again. There is a is just so powerful and the fact this story that we're talking about you have this older couple affected by COVID-19 mm -hmm. and then the nurses and the doctors who have to just really um you know work during this time and so um you know Andy oh my goodness you were definitely spot on when you just talked about the bomb and Gilly and the healing power of that bomb yeah you know, in this. now uh I want to go back to uh, Eugene, very quickly, because you had already have a little connection now. Talk to us just very briefly about your connection and how you all know each other. Gosh, Andy and I have known each other, wow, Andy, since what, 2000? Don't, don't, don't be telling no age now. Because <laughs> <laughs> you out here, you about to roll it off your tongue. You know, this black don't crack, honey. Don't be telling no age. <laughs> For many years, Andy uh, was a master, finishing her master's at the University of Michigan, and I just started my doctorate. And, uh, you know, as you can imagine, everybody knows that voice. I mean, you hear that voice and you're like, that is Godiva chocolate. I want, and I, when I, when um, d we commissioned Damien and he scored it for a soprano soloist, I, you know, I immediately knew, gosh, I want to connect with a DMV soloist. And I just knew that it would fit so well in her voice. And I know she loves four, but for me, when you hear her saying, I want Jesus to walk with me, movement two, oh my goodness. <laughs> it is spectacular. So this is a, a huge, um, I think just a huge ex opportunity and it's so exciting to have Andy and ours paths cross again in this way. That's amazing. Now, Bob, I want to get to you because I'm sure it's a, a, a challenging yet rewarding experience to set such a work for such a time as this, you know, with film and music. I mean, maybe just talk to me a little bit about um, what's going through your mind or what has gone through your mind in this process. It was it was really a great opportunity when, when Eugene approached me and Stephen with the idea of, of how do we put something uh, to film with this incredible music that Damon created? And uh, um, you know, of course we had to make it relevant to what we're doing today with everyone experiencing in 2020. And, uh, and the whole idea from fear to hope is what we're all experiencing. And uh, um, so the challenge was how do we create a film and still be able to make it in these challenging times too. So um, try to, uh, do it with minimal crew. Uh, we shot most of it here in the house and uh, uh, between uh, uh, two actors, three actors and a couple days of filming and then uh, went to DC to do uh, independent two shoots simultaneous to film our chorus as they came in. And it's the first time I got to meet Andy and it's the first time I've heard Andy's voice. I, I didn't have a track with her voice and she was belting it out uh, in the basement of this uh, Catholic church, and it was spectacular. And I fell in love with her voice, and uh, and her part of this film wouldn't, it, it's so incredible that uh, without it, we wouldn't have the kind of film we do. So it's been my honor and my pleasure to do it. Wow. Now, Bob, I know that you have a moment that stands out to you as well. Talk a little bit about that so that the listeners can get your perspective. When, um, and not to, to make it downer, but uh, 
um, when, when I was thinking back about the memories of all these things that are going on with 2020, one of them was uh, with, with my father in his last days. My father was uh, always loved music. And when he was losing the ability to communicate with us, we would play music in uh, the hospice and he would start uh, clicking to the music. Uh, he used to conduct all our choirs in church. And then he would, he'd actually lift his hands up and conduct. And it was our, our, no, our way to know that dad could hear us and understand us. And so I included that very moment in this film. And it brings tears to my eye when I see uh, the elder gentleman start clicking his finger in the beat to the music and start conducting. So it's a, it's important homage and, and memory of my dad that I wanted to put in it. So I think we have a clip from that, um, from your remembrance, and we're going to just play a little bit of that if we can now. Nothing is ever really goodness that is so touching and you know that made me think of a story that was recently in the news did you all see the story about the the older ballerina who had alzheimer's and she was um listening to the i think i forgot which uh ballet movement it was but she started mimicking that so she had had the memory lapse but she that music sparked that so that that spoke to just the point you raised how music has the, the ability just to stir emotion and just to bring things back Oh my goodness, so amazing. Now, Eugene, I want to come back to you because, you know, I I looked at the score, I had a chance to glance at the score, and it was very involved. And so, you know, I want to go back and talk to you about your movement, which I think is brief. Well, it's hard to have a, a favorite, as I, as Andy, I think, also said. Breathe uh, is sits right in the middle of the cantata, and I, I it stands out to me because it's the most uh, unique compared to the other movements. You know, we've got Bach, we've got spirituals, but this movement is contemporary with contemporary affects. Uh, he depicts the idea of breath if you will, um, with the, the string. Seth plays these what, harmonics, tone los, which is basically this affect of playing sort of non-pitched sounds that sounds like one's breath. Uh, and then the choir is in a different key, an old church key called a mode, D Dorian. Uh, and you hear it sounds very mysterious. And all to this brilliant text by Anima Tasei, who's a Sierra Leonean poet, who talks about how much breath, you think about COVID-19, and how when one is stricken with COVID-19, something that we take for granted, breath that you lose. And so this song talks about that. Not only are we struggling with breath when we think of Black Lives Matter, I can't breathe. We think about COVID-19 breath, I'm, str I'm just trying to get my breath. So it, the text, the combination of the affects and the text just make this movement really, really special. And I really like in the music how you have short notes, you have long notes, and that kind of depicts like the uncertainty uh, of the breath and what's my experience. And so, you know, thank you so much for sharing that with me. Uh, Bob, I want to go back to you because, you know, I noticed that this, this cantata is, is broken up into five movements and they have different themes. So what goes through your mind as a filmmaker when you're trying to create this whole feeling of continuity all the way throughout? The nice thing on this is, uh, I think, between Eugene and Damien, they'd already determined a storytelling process because it does go from fear to hope. And that is what, uh, that's the best kind of story to tell anyways, right? I mean, you set up an issue in a film that needs to be resolved and you go through all the turbulation of, of uh, storytelling and hopefully you have a happy resolution or at least a resolution that we can live with and, and look forward to. And so it was, um, it was already 
80% done by the time they even asked me to create one. It was just merely me trying to create a story that affected me or, or a personal story for me to, uh, to draw it in and, and get me really hooked into it. And uh, um, so, I, I mean, I hate to say it was easy, but that, that, that was one of the easier parts is creating the story. Let's take a moment to go back um, to breathe. Uh, so we can get a little bit of, of that, what uh, Maestro Rogers was depicting when he was describing that. Martin, Martin, can you hear me? Cool. Martin. Level 24. Cool. Martin. Level 24. Cool. Level 24. Level 24. <laughs> That was that was deeply powerful. Now, as we as we draw to a close, um, you know, we have all of these different emotions. You have fear. You have this idea of you know breathing, resolving, uh, the prayer. Um, you know, maybe I can just put this out there, uh, Andy. I know that you know. You know, you and I connected. We go back a way back. So I'm just going to come to you with this. Uh, out of all of those things, I know you talked about your favorite moment, but as you've been going through COVID 19 and raising your boys and, you know, managing home and different things, uh, what is one of the facets of this that really speaks to you? For me, it's prayer. Um, I, I already meditate quite a, every morning when I wake up before I get started because yes, you you said it right. I am a homeschool mom now because of COVID because I'm protecting my boys. Um, but I have to pray, honey, before I start schooling, okay? Because my schooling is totally different from the school that they were going to. <laughs> um, so prayer definitely speaks to me. Um, but no, I like I said, Damien did a fantastic job with um, I want Jesus to walk with me. That's my, I think that's movement, um, movement two. Um, and just how he, how he has the transition from that we need this prayer to here's the healing and here's the resolve. I mean, how the storyline goes. And I'm just, I'm in awe of Damien. And I'm, to be honest, I'm in awe of the Washington Chorus and their thought process of being virtual this way and how they put all this together. Because when Eugene came to me with this idea and he said, Andy, we're gonna create a movie. And I'm thinking, what? A movie. <laughs> I'm like, how are we gonna create a movie and we supposed to be locked down? But we created a movie. That was my thought, and I just said, okay, you know. And when they started shipping me um, sound equipment, because of course, you know, you know, I don't have those things, and having the sound engineer behind me, honey, I have to say, it's prayer for my husband to be able to figure out all of what was figured out with the sound and stuff and and how they were able to get this large chorus to um, blend and even through virtually. Uh, you know, it's really, um, like I said, I'm a Christian, it's really prayer how it's all come together. And every little moment, because I haven't seen it all, like um, I'm sure Bob and Eugene, I haven't seen it all, but every clip that I do see, I'm in awe. I'm like, that ain't nothing but God that put this together. He said he, Eugene said he was fearful, but it's nothing to fear because it's really beautiful. It really truly is in that um, you guys put the right people in place. So, but for me, it's prayer. Wow, thank you so much. Now, before we wrap up, I do have a fun activity for us to do, but first I want to, I want to end this part of it with the maestro. And, um, Eugene, I just want to ask you, um, on the listeners' end, uh, what do they expect to hear as far as the forces involved? You all kind of um, mentioned the cello, but what's the cello in relation to the chorus? Talk about that sort of The cello, Seth, Seth Parker Woods is our guest cellist, and 
I, I asked Damien to have it for one instrument and a soloist, another soloist, because, you know, with the virtual stage to have too many instruments, it just complicates things. But so Seth is a part of the entire work because the work is based on Bach's cantata, um, Weinenklagen, Zorgenzagen, that has the chacon that's played. And so Seth starts with us and Damien beautifully sort of threads that chacon in every movement. So Seth sort of becomes hope. Sometimes he becomes turbulent. Sometimes he becomes just the foundation. And then Andy is the voice of hope. I think Damien has said that as well. And so every time she appears, it's always up. Uh, but don't lose sight of faith. Don't lose sight of hope. Uh, and then you have the chorus, the full chorus in every movement. So um, those are the forces. And then obviously this fantastic film that's that Bob has created around it. So. So I have a trick question that's kind of going to lead up to this quiz for you there. So with that being said, you have the cello and you have the choir. Would you consider this a acapella work or how would you classify this work if you have the choir and just the, the cello? I would definitely not consider this an acapella work. I consider this a work for chorus, for cello soloists and soprano soloists. So um, no, I don't consider it acapella, but it is mostly acapella because the cellist is acting as a really a fifth voice most of the time instead of being an accompaniment. It's really only in the first movement do you get the sense of accompaniment from the cellist. Most of the time, Seth is playing quite soloistic, uh, the way Andy is as well. So, so sort of, but not really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we're going to do a little quiz. Are you guys ready? Yes. Okay, let's get to it. <laughs> So traditionally now, underlying traditionally now, a cantata uses all of the following except to tell the story, except A, text, B, film, C, soloist, or D, chorus. Oh. Look, all of you guys got it right. <laughs> Did you all get it right, Listy? All right. <laughs> got it. Excellent. All right. Number two. For what church denomination did Bach mostly compose his cantatas? A, Catholic, B, Baptist, C, Lutheran, or D, Presbyterian? You'll tell us when, or we just hold it up? You just hold it up. Okay. <laughs> oh, A, A. Oh, Eugene, you got it. It's C, Lutheran. I knew it was Lutheran. I was thinking it's either A, Catholic, or Lutheran. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, that's a good guess, considering, you know, mass setting. <laughs> you know. All right. Three, the composer of this cantata, Damien Jeter, is a native of what Virginia town? A, Hopewell, B, Prince George, C, Chesterfield County, or D, Gloucester? Same, okay, repeat, repeat, repeat. <laughs> a, Hopewell, B, Prince George, C, Chesterfield County, or D, Gloucester? Okay, I'm well. I'm ready. All right. Oh, so Andy and Bob got it, but you did miss it. Oh, you guys. So it's definitely C. <laughs> <laughs> I love how we have to flip the answers. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Isn't this fun? So the last one, now, the last one. All right. Katana for a more hopeful tomorrow technically is an A, acapella work, B, accompanied work, C, acapella with cello, or D, a mix of all of the above. I mean, exactly. I'm, I'm with you. Yay! So, did, so, Paul, you were 
So you see it exactly right. I picked them all over the above. So this is like that hit that I kind of gave to Eugene to answer that question. <laughs> I'm glad Eugene answered that question because all my music has some music underneath me. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, Eugene, Andy, thank you so much for being here on TWC TV. We thank you so much for this inside look into Katala for a more hopeful tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Patrick. Again, I'm your host, Patrick D. McCoy, and this has been TWC TV. We do hope that you will join us for the world premiere of Katala for a more hopeful tomorrow by Damien Jeter. More information is on the Washington Course website. Have a good evening.